Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I welcome you once more into New Wine Gospel Ministry TV. I bless the name of the Lord. I bless Almighty God for your life. I thank Him because He is worthy of our praise. Uh, he is worthy. He is worthy. He has made it possible for us to see today and each day that we spent on this planet Earth. It is uh, an opportunity for us to be able to strive towards fulfilling our plan, uh, the plan and purpose of God in our lives. Uh, let, let us pray. My Lord and our God, Father, we bless you. Mighty Jehovah, we adore you, we worship you, for you alone is worthy to be praised. Almighty Father, the great man in battle in our lives, I honor you tonight, Lord God. I commit myself unto thy able hand, mighty Jehovah. I see that please to use me as, your, as, in your, as an oracle unto you, mighty Jehovah. I pray in your mercy, Father, Lord God, may I not speak the word of mine, Lord God. I pray this self in me will disappear while your spirit take absolute control this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. And as many as are going to stumble into this mighty Jehovah, I pray that you open up their heart, their ears, and their eyes, Father, Lord God, to be able to comprehend and understand, mighty Jehovah, that you are in control of, are in control of this universe, and you are in absolute control of everything that is happening around the world. I just bless you now, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Um, Beloved, children of God, I sense in my spirit an urgency for us to rise up to the occasion, rise up and stand up for the truth, the truth which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The enemy is trying to take control. I feel that the enemy has overstepped his boundary. I feel that the enough is enough and it's high time we rise. It's high time we rose and, and push back the enemy and take back, back everything that he has stolen from us in the mighty name of Jesus. What am I saying? Um, evil has crawled into the church. People are using this gospel as, as a toy. I see it as a caricature. I see it as a mockery of the gospel and as blasphemy. And not only that, I feel that not only are they doing it just to mock the gospel, also, they're doing it to roll as many as people they can that they can to help with them. But that's not the plan and purpose for for uh, uh, of God for man. His will is that we will spend eternity with Him in in heaven, and that is why He sent His only begotten Son to die for you and I, so that we could spend eternity in heaven. And He says, as many as have received Him. Those he has given the power to become the sons and daughters of God. So today we are going to read uh, the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew 10.1. The book of Matthew 10.1 and I read. It says, And he, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out to and also to heal sickness and all kinds of diseases and I also want to take you to the book of Mark 13 and that says it says Jesus telling us now he says take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying I am he and will deceive many what am I saying today there are people in churches there are people behind the pulpit that are not children of god but they hide under the pulpit they hide under the the the, 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 uh, uh, the name cross and the name jesus christ and they are committing atrocities i heard that the pastor had the god to stand behind the pulpit and tell his congregation that we are not given the power to cast a demon. It's not a lie from the pit of hell. The Bible tells us we, without the power, our, 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 our gospel is meaningless. Without the resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead, who is the reason why we can stand today and say, we have life, we have hope, we can live tomorrow because we know who we serve. So the Lord already forewarned us. He says, 
there will be people like this. And if we, in the book of uh, uh, Timothy, it says they will have all form of godliness. They will look like the right people. They will speak the right language. They will quote the Bible. Even they will perform miracles. Miracles, not in the name of, yeah, they're using the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, but not actually the power of God. It says there will be people like this and at these last days. So on the last day, there will be men and women like this that will crawl, not, not only running around on the surface of the earth, they will crawl into the church and one will lead as many as they can to hell. See, the enemy knows that he's already rolling off to hell, but he doesn't want to roll all by himself. He will to take as many as he wants to with him. But that is not the portion of the children of, of, of God's creation. That's not the portion of man. That's not the plan of man. From God. God has planned and purpose that after we have spent our life here, that we'll come home and spend eternity with him. Now you have these people, they stand behind the pulpit and they, what, what are they doing? They're only feeding people lies, lies from the pits of hell, denying them the power that God has already given unto us. What do you think of this? As far as I'm concerned, I, 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 the only thing I can make out of this is that enough is enough. It's high time we rise up to the occasion and start pushing back the enemy and take control of this universe. Now, let's go to the book of Corinthians. The book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3.16. It says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? See, we are the temple of the Most High God. When you receive Christ in truth and in spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. God himself dwells within you. And we are talking about Almighty God, a sovereign God. We're talking about even God, that even the enemy says, in the book of Jesus, fear him with, worship him with fear and trembling. That this, I mean, this enemy worships him with fear and trembling. So this power dwells in us. So we are walking, talking, living, house for Jesus because God dwells in you if Jesus dwells in you the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob if you invite him into your life and he dwells in you you are a powerhouse and he has given us the authority to trample upon serpent to trample upon scorpions and by no means will they hurt us, the book of uh, Psalm 91 tells us. Now, what business has the enemy even to come and stand behind the pulpit to say that there is no power, that you have no power to cast a demon? Our Lord Jesus Christ has already forewarned us about people like this. In these last days, I count it a blessing that I am witnessing this. That I'm, I am in this planet Earth while all the Bible is just unfolding itself. It's like we're living the Bible prophecy. If you read your Bible. And the, our Lord Jesus Christ has already told us that people like this will arise. They'll have all form of godliness 
and deny the power thereof. They take advantage of the fact that we are so busy, busy bodies, busy doing nothing. You say, how can I say that? Yeah. If you're so busy with all the cares of the, or, or, you know, and worries of this earth, job, school, that, 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 by the time you come home and you dinner, you have children, you have to take care of, you have to do this, you have to do that, and, and then you even extra curriculum that you can't even spend time with God. You can't spend time with the word of God. You don't have enough time, even if it's 30 minutes, to read the word of God by yourself and understand it, you will be deceived. I tell you again, you will be deceived. Because it's only the Holy Spirit that could teach you the truth. When you read your Bible and meditate on the word of God, he will begin to give you the knowledge and understanding of God's existence, begin to give you knowledge of an understanding of the right path to take, and when you are drifting away, it will pull you back. So we do this so that the enemy will not take absolute control of our lives. Instead of bringing us closer to God, we will drift us away from him. The plan and purpose of God is that after all said and done, that we will make it to heaven. Especially for those of us that hear about the gospel and are already professing Christ. And this is so dangerous that even these people that are so possessed by evil, they're very, very, it's very easy for them to, to, to convince their, congrega their, 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 their congregation. What they do to them, I cannot actually say. No, what, what do they do to them? It's just because they are not reading the word of God for themselves. We have to read the word of God for ourselves. We have to allow the spirit of God to begin to minister to us. Make sure that we are walking the right path. And not rolling off to hell thinking that we are doing the right thing. See, when the spirit of God dwells in you, it comes with love, power, and a sound mind. Power. Did you hear that? Power. It gives you boldness. And when the, any man or woman is standing behind, behind the pulpit to lie to you, you'll be able to, no, no, that's a lie. And you have no problem standing up to that one and set the record straight. And that's the reason why I am doing this program today. See, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not afraid of any man or any woman. I'm not afraid of what, what, they, could, what they could do or intend to. Because I have been bought by the blood of Jesus. So if you are one of those that stand behind the pulpit, there's so many lies going around the world now, and that's not enough for you. And now, you're crawling into the house of God and thinking you can get away with it. <laughs> you need repentance. There is still room at the cross for you. As long as the Lord tarries. So you need to repent of your wicked and evil way. Enough of the atrocities that's been committed enough of the murder you want to kill people's soul and drag them to hell what makes you think that's the right thing to do if you don't believe in the power that's your business but keep it to yourself and you have no business linking yourself with the name jesus so People of God, understand something. First Corinthians 3 16. It says, Do you not know that you are the temple of the most high God? See, this body you think is just ordinary body. Well, 
it will be what you will make it to be. But when you accept God, accept the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, he that has power above every other power, and you accept him in truth and in spirit, he comes and lives within you, and you just house in him. And by no means shall any evil come near you. It says that the enemy will come against you like a flood, that his spirit will rise up and raise the standard. What can be better than that? Do not allow anybody to tell you that you, are, you don't have enough power. The Bible says, the Bible says it's not by power, nor by might, but by the spirit of the most high God, says the Lord. So you are a, a walking powerhouse, Jesus machine. And when you feel like you've been tormented by evil, rise to the occasion, call unto the name of the Lord. The name that is above every other name. It says the righteous run into it and they are saved. That is a, it's a strong tower. All you need to do, call upon that name. And evil must bow in the mighty name of Jesus. We have to understand who we serve in. We have to understand that this is the end time. Look at what's going on around us. Scriptures. It's just unfolding before our naked eyes. Unfortunately, well, it's already was foretold. In the book of Isaiah 6, 9, it says, in seeing, they will see. Huh? They will hear wars and rumors of war. They will see all these natural disasters, earthquakes, tornadoes, tsunamis, events like never before. They are seeing, but they are not actually, they are not understanding it, they are not perceiving it. Why? Because the heart of man has been so what's cold, so dull as a result of sin. But there's still room at the cross. That's the good news. There is still room at the cross. As long as the Lord tarries, you that is instituting evil in the house of God, using the house of God as allowing the enemy to use it as an agent of evil, there is still room at the cross for you. You need to repent of your wicked ways. Look for another way. But don't you ever, ever, ever try on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to have your way. You that is watching today, I pray that God in his mercy, he's the only one that opposes and sustains. We cannot do anything without him. I pray that God in his mercy will continue to rest, rest his hand of mercy upon each and every one of us. That he will continue to guide us in the right path. That he will continue to lead us onto that path of righteousness. That he will continue to uphold and sustain us in the mighty name of Jesus. That he will give us that wisdom when the enemy want to crawl or want to cross his boundary. We will rise up with the spirit of the most high God. And profess him as the only way and profess him as the one that has power above every other power and we will stand up and stand against the enemy and speak the truth in the mighty name of Jesus we have been forewarned in the book of Ephesians take on the whole armor of God helmet of salvation the sword of the spirit which is the word of God ha And he says, continuously watching and praying so that we could withstand the day of evil. Our race will not be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. As many as are professing Christ and confessing Christ 
in the mighty name of Jesus, Spirit of the Most High God, you will begin to teach them your way, you that is the truth. Lead them to that path of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, that you instill your boldness in them, that when the enemy rises up to want to lie at them, or lie to them, or lie against you, that they will rise up to the occasion and put the enemy where it belongs in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask for your grace, your grace upon your people. Your word says that your grace is sufficient for us. And your mercy, your tender mercy, dear Lord, may it be made new to us each and every morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, and may you continue to be faithful in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you tell you, dear Lord, help us uphold your people. Pull them to your path, Lord God, so that together we will make heaven and we will rejoice together and put the enemy where it belongs forever in the pit of hell. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I thank you for watching. I bless God for your life. As you watch this, share it with somebody. There is an urgency. Jesus is coming soon. We don't have any more time left. But tomorrow is not even guaranteed to you. This moment might be your last. So I will advise you that you follow the right path and understand the truth and the scripture for yourself. And don't let any man or woman lead you astray. God bless you. Love you.